This video covers forest assessment and how to undertake it in your own native forest. Why undertake a forest assessment? Forest assessment is the process of breaking up your forest area into like forest types and units as you will be applying the same management regime across the whole unit as it has similar species mix and condition. You measure aspects such as species mix, diameter, tree stocking levels, estimated log length and timber product in a representative sample and apply the data over its respective management unit. This information can be used for a number of key management areas, namely, it provides critical data on the condition of your forest to be able to construct a meaningful management plan, to estimate future income and harvest cycles, as well as forecast expenditure for such things as infrastructure maintenance, forest treatment and so on. To calculate the standing value of timber on the property at purchase to ensure that it is recognised as part of the capital purchase and hence non-taxable until the income from timber sales exceeds valuation. To calculate the standing value of timber on the property at the point of selling the property or to demonstrate collateral for bank overdrafts or loans. The approach does not need to be too complex but requires as many measurements as possible over an accurately measured area. The assessment process gives a thorough understanding of the dynamics of your forest and without this basic information a planned management approach cannot be achieved. You could equate it to managing and selling your cattle without knowing how many cattle are in the paddock, what age they are and then letting the purchaser pick which ones are to be sold. One of the most useful tools in the assessment process and native forest management planning is aerial photography. Apart from identifying likely landscape management units, assets, fence lines, aerial photography will aid in defining how you will go about breaking up your forest for the assessment process. Areas that may exist on your property that require special management can be clearly marked on your aerial photograph or place marked on your phone map. This is a good basis to now decide which areas are worth assessing, what areas are likely to have similar forest types and conditions and how extensive the assessment needs to be to capture an accurate understanding of your forest. A very useful phone app that can greatly assist your assessment is the Avenza PDF's map app. PFSQ can supply you with a geo-referenced aerial photo of your property that you can then download via the app to your phone. The app allows you to accurately pinpoint your location and the boundaries of your remnant and non-remnant areas designation of your drainage lines and accurately measure an area or a distance. It also pinpoints and locates any photographs taken of your forest. A number of skills are needed to assess the attributes of a forest. These include number one, the ability to recognize non-commercial species such as smooth barked apple and or supplejack and commercial species such as spotted gum, grey iron bark, yellow stringy bark to name a few. PFSQ has a pocket booklet and videos to assist in the identification of 22 of the most common species of southern Queensland. Number two, the ability to understand basic product specification and then recognise the probable forest products within each tree measured, such as poles and saw logs. Number three, recognition of probable faults that will downgrade poles to saw logs or A grade saw logs to B grade saw logs or even worse, duds. Number four, being able to recognise the crown health classification from very poor to very good. Number five, basic stand assessment and tree measurement skills to determine diameter, height, stems per hectare and volumes. How do you start? The assessment process is best undertaken with two people, one to record data and the other to measure and assess. To simplify the process, equipment such as a retractable tape to measure the diameter of the plot or length of the strip and a diameter measuring tape to measure the dbh of each tree is essential. The preferred methodology for gathering data is along a 10 metre wide strip. This is achieved by measuring 5 metres either side of a compass bearing central line. The major benefit of strip lines is that you can also pick up changes in vegetation and watercourses as you traverse the property. The length of the strip line is again determined by the intensity of the assessment and the degree of variability within the stand. Assessment is usually undertaken by measuring and recording data on a representative sample of the stand including species, stem diameter at breast height dbh, product range and length, stem defects and crown health of each tree in the plot. 
A decision is also made and recorded as to whether a tree is ready for harvest, retained in the stand or treated out. Once a representative sample of each forest type has been completed, the information can then be extrapolated across the management unit. Crown health is described in the Native Forest Management Guide's wet and dry forest types and forest products are outlined with specifications in the Forest Products and Marketing Guide. Once stem diameter and product length is determined, log volume can be calculated using log volume tables. What next? Apply this data to individual map units to quantify forest products and volumes. The data will provide insight into a range of potential forest products, current harvestable volumes, retained future harvestable volumes and numbers of stems to be treated. This information is good for harvesting operations scheduling and average volumes of herbicide for thinning treatments.